and welcome to the episode 292 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A unique live performance, two recording sessions, and a day in court are some of the highlights of this episode. Let's start with the 19th of October 1960. On this date, the Beatles, in their quintet lineup with Pete Best on drums and Stuart Sutcliffe from bass, were again engaged at the Kaiser Keller for their ongoing residency in Hamburg, West Germany. In 1961, the Beatles, now a quartet but still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at the Litterland Town Hall in Liverpool for yet another BK Promotions Night, along with Jerry and the Pacemakers and Carl Terry and the Cruisers. The concert was remarkable because, during the evening, Someone suggested that the Beatles and Jerry and the Pacemakers might join forces on stage, becoming the Beat Makers. Pete Best and Freddie Madsen alternated at the drums, Les Chadwick was on bass, George Harrison on lead guitar, John Lennon at the piano, Les McGuire on saxophone, Jerry Madsen on lead guitar and vocals, and Paul McCartney on rhythm guitar. For a couple of numbers, Carl Terry also joined the impromptu band on vocals. Naturally, this was a one-time experiment that would never be attempted again. Another live gig in 1962 for the Beatles, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums, with a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. 1963. The Beatles were live at the Pavilion Gardens Ballroom in Buxton. On this date, in 1964, the British tour of the Beatles stopped in Edinburgh, with two concerts at the ABC Cinema. Having completed the coverage of the live gigs, allow me to remind you to please visit www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do to help this community grow and to learn how you can acquire the deluxe version of the podcast with hours of extra material. Thank you! Moving to the 19th of October 1965, we find the Beatles busy with a botched recording of their third Christmas recording for their official fan club. They ad libbed from a script prepared by Tony Barrow, their press officer getting around the piano to sing improvised Christmas nonsense at the Marquee Studio in London. The recording was unusable, though. Not only George Harrison was absent from the date, meaning that the other three Beatles had to mimic his voice while reading his lines, but the fabs sounded forced and unfunny. John Lennon didn't like the material they were given and was vocal about these feelings. Paul McCartney tried to come up with something on the spot but failed, and Ringo Starr ended up being silent for most of the 26 minutes of the recording. The two tapes from the recording session were auctioned in 2003 and 2004, respectively. To this date, they have not been released in their entirety, and only parts of them circulate on the bootleg market. In 1967, the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film went on at Norman's film production. In the evening, between 7 pm and 3.30 am, the Beatles overdubbed two guitar parts, Paul's main vocals and John's and George's backing vocals, onto Hello Goodbye at the EMI Studio One. The session was completed with a reduction mix. Let's close this episode with a court hearing. On this date, in 1968, John Lennon and Yoko Ono appeared at the Marylebone Magistrates' Court in London. In a five-minute session, they were officially charged with possession of cannabis and obstruction of justice by Sergeant Norman Pilcher. They were released on bail and learned that they had to reappear in front of a judge on the 28th of November. Outside, John and Yoko were assaulted by the press. One of the pictures was later used for the back cover of Unfinished Music No. 2, Life with the Lions. 
Yoko, still pregnant, would lose her child in a matter of weeks, as we will see. And on this sad note, we close the episode. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.